Hello everyone, welcome to the start of a new weekly, hopefully, reading vlog. So my intention is to start reading vlogs on Saturdays through Fridays and then having them all edited and uploaded by the end of that Friday so you have the content on Saturday. However, if time does not permit or if there's like not a lot going on and I feel the vlog is a little bit short or lackluster, I probably will push it out for two weeks. Cause I mean, let's be honest guys, all I do all week is work full time and that's not very exciting, but I wanted to go ahead and start the vlog. Now I admit that I am cheating a little bit. I'm cheating in two ways. First, I am starting the vlog two days early. It was supposed to work out perfectly because the Saturday is October 1st, which is the start of a whole new month. So I figured that worked out really, really well. However, I did get some book mail that I wanted to show you and I finished the book that I was reading last night and I didn't want to start another book and risk not having it finished by Saturday. So I'm also cheating in the fact that I am starting my October TBR two days early, but we're going to look past it. It's okay. We got to do what we got to do. However, before I go ahead and get into the bookish mail and all that good stuff, I did want to talk to you guys a little bit about some of the rebranding you're probably seeing on my channel. I believe at this point I have changed the banner on my channel. I don't know if I've changed anything else, but I did just want to take a minute to kind of chat about that and explain why I've decided to go ahead and rebrand. So as you all know, I have been away from booktube for about a year and a half. And as I mentioned in one of my other videos, I promised that there was nothing big or dramatic or really super interesting happening during this time. It was a lot of just busy life stuff. But one of the things that was really keeping my attention is that last year I made some really big lifestyle changes and life direction changes all aimed towards a goal of eventually beginning a new career working with animals. My dream has always, always, always been to work with animals, but I never really thought it was feasible for me. I thought that I was either going to have to go into veterinary medicine, which is never something I wanted to do. Medicine in general has never interested me, but I especially did not want to have to deal with medicine and animals and putting them down and, and all of that stuff. Or I thought my only other option was to be maybe like a wildlife biologist, scientist, things of that nature. And my brain is just not sciencey y'all. It's just not. My major in college was history and political science. I'm very much an English based brain, not a math brain, not a science brain. And I mentioned that because that has very much influenced the direction that I have taken in my life because I didn't pursue anything working with animals because I just never thought that I could. And so at the very beginning of last year, I was actually in a master's of library and information sciences program. It was an accelerated program. All of the courses were only eight weeks long. So it was very intense, um, very, very stressful. And after three classes, I was just kind of fed up. I was like, I'm not enjoying what I'm learning. I don't even know if this degree is going to result in a career that I love because do I really want to be in a customer facing situation the rest of my life, even if it is related to books. And so I kind of had this big aha moment. I was listening to a podcast. I don't remember now what the podcast was or who was speaking, but they were really talking about going after dreams and taking the steps necessary to live your dreams, no matter how small those steps are. And I just kind of said to myself, you know what? I'm tired of being scared to pursue this. I'm tired of telling myself I can't do this. And so after some research, I did find this program called Animal Health and Behavior. It's a 100% online. It's out of an environmental college in Maine. And I decided to go ahead and go for it. I have always considered myself an animal advocate my entire life. And for the past several years, I've also been a cruelty-free consumer, meaning none of the products in my home have ever been tested on animals, nor are they sold in countries that could require animal testing. So I've always been conscientious in that regard. I've always been the person and to take in strays when necessary. You know, I'll stop in the middle of the road if I see a turtle trying to cross and help that turtle along. I just do all of that stuff that's always very natural to me. I know a lot of people feel called to help other humans and that is definitely not me. I do not feel called to help humans. I feel called to help animals. And so I'm finally ready to take the step to dedicate my, my life to the health and welfare and safety of animals. And so I did decide to take that educational shift last year and it is a very intense program. Each course is only five weeks. So even though I'm only taking one course at a time, I am considered a full-time student, which as you can imagine, can be very overwhelming because I do work full-time outside of the home. I do also have my house to take care of my husband, my family. So I don't always take classes. I do take breaks in between for my own mental health. And I'm just kind of slowly plugging my way through it. But that is what I'm doing. That does take up um, a lot of my time. And I also did decide to make some lifestyle shifts that better represent my, my goals and values. And I won't necessarily get a lot into that here that it just really basically has to do with living more sustainably and just trying to be a more mindful and conscious human. And so that all of that was kind of taking up my time and energy because I was just focusing on school, doing a lot of research, just doing a lot of things to further my goals. And eventually what I would like to do is 
is to start dipping my toes in to get professional experience working with animals. It really doesn't matter to me in what form I'm working with animals, whether like I'm a zookeeper or whether I'm at an aquarium or whether I'm in the rescue field. And so I want to kind of start, you know, maybe interning at the aquarium or volunteering at the Humane Society or even just taking in fosters. Whatever that might look like, I do plan on incorporating it into my channel. This will always be a booktube channel, but you will definitely see animals. I mean, you already do with my four rescue fur babies. They are big features, especially in my vlogs. And so whatever path I decide to take with regard to working with animals, but whatever experience I decide to get, I do want to document that and I do want to share it with y'all. And so I wanted to make my channel a little bit more reflective of that. And so that's why I'm now called Rescues and Reads. And I'm not married to that name, by the way, that was just something that I came up with. And if you have any other thoughts, I would love to hear them. I've also been redesigning like my banner and stuff and I am not a designer. I am not creative at all. And so this was just like really what I could come up with. I'm just kind of trying to take small steps to rebrand my channel and make it more in line with my life and what I love and my passion. Books and animals are two of my biggest passions and now they're going to be reflected here. I know y'all sorry that was very long and rambly but if you've been here for a while you know that that is just me. I just kind of wanted to give you all an update about what you are seeing on my channel. Now let's go ahead and quickly get into the book mail because I do probably should start working soon or something. Okay so the very first one is actually this beautiful hardcover special edition of Verity by Colleen Hoover and it has a bonus chapter I have not read it yet. I'm gonna be honest y'all I'd say that I have a very love-hate relationship with this book. I remember when I read it I loved like 98% of it. I was hooked. Colleen Hoover was just doing such a good job of creating those thrilling vibes. This was like her very first ever foray into that genre I think and she was doing such a great job. I loved it so much and then we get to the end and I don't really want to say anything about the ending but there was this very long exposition I guess you would call it from one of the characters in here that kind of ruined some of the mystery for me. In fact I think that maybe dropped my rating from like a 4 4.5 down to a 3 because I was just so disappointed in the way that she decided to do that but as I have now taken a lot of time away from this book like I think it's been like two or three years since I've read this book. I realize kind of the genius in that storyline and now that I've had some time away from it I I realize I, I probably don't hate this book as much as I thought. I would like to reread it but then also like rereading thrillers is just never as good the first time because you already know. I mean mystery thrillers are my favorite genre of all time and I keep my favorites even though I know I'm never going to reread them and this would be the same situation but I think maybe this could do with a reread just to see how I feel about it the second time knowing the twist and maybe just like pay better attention to everything happening. So anyway this is a really beautiful edition. I loved it. I wanted to go ahead and have it on my shelves. Arm was getting tired. Had to switch. My next book is actually also related to Colleen Hoover. She didn't write it, but if y'all don't know she actually has a monthly book box. It's called the bookworm box and there are two options if I'm remembering correctly. One is an indie romance and then the other is indie young adult. I believe it's all indie just kind of giving spotlights to really great authors that might not otherwise get the attention and so I wanted to try it out and my very first book by her was called The Doctor and I can't remember offhand who wrote that but that normally would not be a book that I ever picked up and read because it's almost purely smut but I ended up enjoying it a lot more than I thought that I would so I went ahead and kept my subscription and I just got the newest book in the mail and this is the book it's called The One Who Loves You by Pippa Grant. I've never heard of this author before but apparently she is a USA Today best-selling author of rom-coms and I believe that's what this is. Let me go ahead and read you the synopsis on the back really quick. It says, if the Upper East Side had an evil twin, it would be tickled pink Wisconsin. This rundown backwoods town isn't worthy of the footprint of my Lou Baton, never mind all of me. But when my grandmother has a near-death experience and realizes we lightlies can't buy our way into heaven, she relocates the family to Tickle Pink to work on improving our souls. And that's how I trade my heiress existence for gigantic bugs, dishwater coffee, and a cranky single dad named Teague Miller. Teague spends his days fishing, raising his spunky teenager, and after an unfortunate incident involving cheese curds, living rent-free in my head. One thing he and I can agree on is that I don't belong here. He's willing to help me escape until the unexpected happens. I kind of like him. I might even more than like him. But am I ready to give up the life I adored for a man I love to hate? This is giving me such simple wild vibes. I think this is going to be as substantial or maybe serious as the simple wild, but I'm here for it. I'm really interested to read this and see how it goes. I do love me some rom-com sometimes. This also kind of sounds like that, that duology by Tessa Bailey. I cannot think of the name, but I will post a picture of the book um, up here on the screen for you. It's kind of giving me those vibes as well. And I really did enjoy that book and need to read the second one. So yeah, absolutely. I'm here for this. I'm excited. I hope I really do enjoy this and want to keep the subscription. I have tried multiple book box subscriptions and none of them have ever worked out for me before. So 
we'll see how this goes. I really want to be introduced to new authors. I want to have my horizons expanded, if you will. Anyway, guys, this was long and I just now realized that I told you I was going to start my October TBR early, but I didn't tell you what I was going to start. Clearly, we're still getting back into the swing of the booktube game, but I'm going to start You by Caroline Kepnes. My library hold just came in for that and I want to go ahead and give it a shot. I am a little bit nervous because of how it's told, but I hear nothing about but great things about it. So we're going to give it a shot. Okay, now I'm really going to go, y'all. Check in with you later. Hey y'all, it is Friday and I am headed into work, but before I did, I wanted to give you an update because I did make significant progress in You by Caroline Kepnes. I'm about 40% of the way through the book and I, I'm not sold. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. On the one hand, my concerns about how this book is told are proving valid. It is told in second person, so you are entirely in Joe's head and you are hearing his thoughts as he's thinking them. So you're not able to connect with the other characters because you're not getting their perspectives. It's entirely Joe's perception. And so there is that sense of disconnect. And that is definitely a problem for me as a character driven reader. I like to be able to know and care about all the characters. And additionally, I don't necessarily like being in Joe's head because he's honestly a judgmental prick. He really, really is. So I don't love Joe and I don't love Beck. And I don't know why Joe loves Beck. Like I don't know what it was about Beck that caused Joe to become so fascinated with her. If you're not really aware of what the story is, this is really about Joe Goldberg. He is working in a bookstore and one day he sees Beck come in and he is like instantly infatuated with her. He instantly loves her. And so that causes him to kind of, well, basically stalk her and it escalates from there. And then they eventually start up like a relationship and that's where I am in the book. They're kind of starting to date and get to know each other. And Joe obviously has some other things going on. And I just honestly, I don't, I don't get it. Like, I don't know what he sees in Beck. She seems like she's very uh, two-faced in some ways, a liar, a very hypocritical and very fake. Her friends are not great either. Or that obviously could be Joe's perception influencing my perception because I'm not getting Beck's perspective. I'm only getting Joe's. So that's another thing too. Like I have to take everything with a grain of salt because this is Joe's perception. So it's a very interesting reading experience and I am intrigued to continue. I do like Carolyn Kepnes's writing overall. Like I love the way that she phrases things. I love the observation observations that she makes and some of the things that she says in here are really really funny so yes I am definitely intrigued to continue like I said I don't love it but I don't hate it either it's I don't think it's going to be a new favorite or anything and I definitely don't think I would continue in this series but I am intrigued enough to maybe watch an episode or two of the show to see how it does and what it's like I don't know how they would do that and I don't know if they would be kind of trying to keep the same narrative style where you're in Joe's head and you're hearing what he's thinking as he's thinking it but I would be interested to give it a shot. If you've watched the show, you'll have to let me know what you think about it. All right, y'all, I'm about to head into work. I'm tired. It's been a long, busy week, and I don't feel like I've been sleeping well at all. And that's very true today because my asshole cats woke me up well before my alarm. They very much wanted to be fed, and when they want to be fed, they become really big jerks. They, like, bite my feet and bat at the blinds and, like, jump all over me. So I just got up and took care of it, and then I was just up. That's why, like, my eyes are done today because I had so much extra time. I love eyeshadow, but I just don't have the time to do it anymore so I was like you know what I have an extra like 30 minutes let's go ahead and do some eyeshadow today but yeah so I'm very very tired I need to go I need to just bust out some work get through this day I have CrossFit at the end of the day today I do CrossFit at the end of every single work day and then after that I'm gonna go ahead and go out to dinner with my friends and my husband and I will go ahead and check in with you when I have another update okay bye <laughs>
October 1st, the official start of this vlog. And here's the plan for today. I just got done getting my nails done and now I'm gonna run into TJ Maxx, which I really, really shouldn't do. Really don't have the money to go to TJ Maxx, but I just every now and then wanna go see what they have, especially during fall time because their fall decor is epic. I'm not a big decoration person. I'm just not creative enough for decorating, but you know, sometimes I see something that inspires me that I wanna pick up. But other than that, it's actually going to be a pretty chill day. We don't really have anything else going on. We do have to run out and go grocery shopping. And then of course, all of the chores at home, a crap ton of laundry to get done, cleaning the house, boring adulting stuff. But today I also wanna work on the new game board that I'm making for the My Bad TBR game. That was a TBR game I created in 2020 before I stopped filming and I'm going to be making some changes to the board primarily with regard to prompts and also I'm going to be making some changes to the rules and probably trying to make it a little bit more complex if not complicated. I don't know why but we're going to do it and we're going to see how it goes. So I still need to create the board. It's very difficult for me to do these things because I just have the hardest time creating boards. I'm not great at it. I wish I had Becca from Becca and the Books's skills when it comes to creating game boards but I've gotten most of the outlining done and I just need to do like the coloring and adding the prompts and all of that stuff. So hopefully I can get a good chunk of that done this weekend and then while I'm doing that I will finish you by Caroline Kepnes. I am over 60 percent of the way through that now so I really 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 would like to get that done today if at all possible so that I can start my next book which just came in from the library which is the Magnolia Palace so I want to go ahead and start that and I just basically want to have a calm but productive weekend where I don't really have to do a whole lot of running around where I can just stay at home Sunday I don't plan on leaving my house at all I will probably film a couple of videos to go out next week and then just have a, a lazy mosey day at home so anyway, that's the plan heading into TJ Maxx now and I'll check in later. See the laser? You get the laser? No? everyone it is Saturday afternoon. I wanted to check in really quick. I'm not done with you yet. Almost. I will definitely be finishing it tonight. I feel like it's taking me forever. I have been listening to it for the better part of this afternoon since we got home from grocery shopping and I'm still not done. I checked and I have an hour and 37 minutes total left on the audiobook and I typically read at two times speed so that would be about 45 minutes. However, I lowered the speed slightly on this because the narrator, while he is fantastic, he talks very fast. In my experience, normally audiobook narrators tend to read 
these books slower than they speak but this guy is probably just talking at his normal pace I'm not sure but I wanted to be able to catch everything and so I lowered it to 1.8 times so it'll probably take me maybe just under an hour to go ahead and finish the book so not long now I will say though that the narrator is really helping me enjoy the book I think a lot more than if I had read it physically just the way that he talks and the inflections that he gives makes me feel like he is Joe. He just did a really good job. I don't know if he actually prepped for this or anything, but he's doing a really, really good job. But anyway, that is not why I am checking in. I'm checking in because I'm currently working on the game board for my TBR game, My Bad, and I wanted to show you the progress that I've made. It's not much. It's just finishing up the outlining and wording and things like that, but I'll go ahead and show you where we're at. Okay, so this is the board. As you can see, all of the outlining for the most part has been done. The only thing I still have left to do is the lettering for the home base. But all of these boxes here are going to have a prompt, of course, and then it's all gonna be color coded because the original game does have four colors, yellow, green, blue, and red. And so I'm gonna definitely color it and make it a little bit more pretty and hopefully get my stuff together so that it is 100% ready by the time I'm going to do my November TBR. So I'm gonna continue to work on this for a little bit longer. I'm gonna make myself dinner right now, but then I'll probably get back to it just at least long enough to finish you before I maybe move on to something else for the night, but that's the plan. Now Archie's getting in on the lizard action. <laughs> Hey y'all, so I just finished You by Caroline Kepnes and I wanted to go ahead and share my thoughts. I am covered in animal hair, but that's just how it works when you live in a home with four animals who shed constantly and all you wear is black. It's gonna happen. Anyway, I honestly don't really know what to make of this book. I think I'm gonna give it like a three stars. <laughs> that's typically a rating I save for books that are very meh, like books that were fine, nothing great or necessarily bad about them, and they're just going to be forgettable. And that's not really what I would classify you. But also, I did not love this book. I understand why it is highly regarded because it is very uniquely told. I've never read a book like this before. You are literally in Joe's head, hearing the thoughts as he's thinking them. And that was super interesting. I was definitely intrigued. I found myself absorbed by that at some point. And like I said before, I really enjoyed Caroline Kepnes's writing overall. I liked the observations she or Joe was making. I found a lot of them very funny, even though they were oftentimes very, very judgmental. There were definitely good parts to this book. However, there were just some things I couldn't get past that ruined my enjoyment. First of all, Beck. As I mentioned in a previous clip, I do not understand why Joe chose to be fascinated with her. I don't know if it was just like this initial attraction thing and he just went along with that, but Beck was awful. She was a liar. She kept secrets. She was manipulative, narcissistic. She basically used boys to get what she wanted. And as soon as they wanted her back, she discarded them. She was horrible. I didn't like her at all. I definitely didn't care about her. I didn't see the appeal. I didn't know why Joe was so infatuated with her. And so that made it really hard to care about their dynamic. I didn't know why Joe was so willing to overlook all of the crap that he was seeing and uncovering because obviously even though she is lying to him and keeping secrets, he knows everything because he has access to like all of her communications and stuff and he just can't live without her. He is literally obsessed with her and he thinks it's love. So obviously Joe is a very deranged, sick individual. He does not recognize this about himself. And when you are in his head, you're not really thinking that way either. You're not really thinking, oh man, Joe, you're sick and deranged. You are along for that ride and you are going with Joe. I don't necessarily think you sympathize with him or understand what he's doing, but you don't necessarily question it. He is the main protagonist of this book and you're going to go where Joe wants you to go. I also didn't necessarily love how... I don't know if vulgar is the right word. Maybe crass is a better word. But a lot of this book was Joe just fantasizing about what he wanted to do to Beck. How and when and where he wanted to have sex with her and all of this stuff. Or it was just him watching her in her private moments. She's a very sexual girl. And so if she's not getting it from somebody else, she's giving it to herself, you know? So it was just a lot of that. And it kind of actually took me out of the story. I'm not really sure what I wanted or expected out of this book. There was just a little bit too much of that. It didn't really work for me. I obviously don't mind sex in books. I read romance. Sometimes I read smut. You know, a little bit of on-page action is fine with me. This was just the sexual fantasies of a deranged individual. And it really just didn't work for me, if I'm being honest with you. So overall, I wasn't as impressed with this book. And I kind of 
of had a feeling it was going to be like that. I was really nervous about the way that it was told. I knew that there was going to be a disconnect and there absolutely was. I didn't really care about the characters. I wasn't connected to them at all. I wasn't invested in them. And in all honesty, by the time we get to the very end of the story, as things are escalating and we're getting to what is supposed to be the most intense part of this book, the climax of this book, I lost all interest. I didn't care. I was just like, yes, finally, it's going to be over. I was working on my TBR game and I was more invested in putting the prompts on the board than actually paying attention to what was happening in the story. I was just over it. I was done. I wanted it to be over. I want to move on to my next book. So this was a three star read for me. I will definitely not be moving on in the series. I would probably not have ended up picking up this book if it had not been a Becca Wreck and I needed it for Buckopoly. So let's just go with that. Not a fan. And now I have to pick my next read. So I had another library hold come in today, Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. And so I have to decide whether I want to do Magnolia House or Love on the Brain. I'm thinking Magnolia House just because I'm more in the mood for a historical slash mystery-ish kind of book than I am for a straight romance contemporary. So we'll see. I'll make that decision. I don't think I'm going to read anything more tonight. If anything, I will watch booktube videos or watch a show or something like that. So I don't have to make the decision right now. But yeah, I think I'm going to go work on my TBR board a little bit more or start editing some of these clips and just wind down, get ready for bed. I do have videos that I need to film tomorrow, so I need to be ready for that. But anyway, y'all, that's it for me today. I hope that you all are having a lovely weekend and I will check in with you tomorrow. I'm sitting here editing a video and I look over and this is what I see. Tough life this one has. Hey y'all, happy Monday. Yes, probably a lot of my updates during the week are going to be in my car. This is just the only time in the morning during the week that I have to actually sit down and talk with y'all. I didn't do any updates yesterday, primarily just because it was like a stay at home, get things done kind of day. I filmed a video yesterday that took me longer to film and edit than I originally planned. And then of course I was doing the household chores, the laundry, everything like that, cooking, baking, all that stuff. I did work on my TBR board a little bit as well. So overall it was a pretty productive day. I just didn't feel like I needed to update y'all on anything. I did start the Magnolia Palace by Fiona Davis and I am now about 50% of the way through. The Magnolia Palace is a historical fiction. It takes place over two timelines. The first timeline is in 1919 and you're following our main character Lillian who for the past several years had been a very high highly sought after model for artists. She's been like memorialized in stone statues all across the city. Uh, I believe they're in New York, but then hard times kind of fall on her. She loses her mother to the Spanish flu and she kind of sinks into her grief. She gains some weight. She's not as highly regarded as she once was. So the funds are all drying up. And then one day her landlord who had a volatile relationship with his wife seems to have killed her and Lillian becomes a suspect. They believe that she was having some kind of affair with her landlord. And so she flees, she runs away and she ends up getting a job at the Frick Mansion, which is this very lavish house in New York that is filled with beautiful art. In fact, Mr. Frick plans to make his house into a museum after he has passed away. So she becomes this private secretary and she is learning all about the house, the art within, and of course the family as well. The other timeline is 1966 and we are following another model who is currently at the Frick Mansion doing a photo shoot. Then after something goes wrong at the photo shoot, she's kind of hiding away and she ends up discovering these hidden letters that actually contain clues to a scavenger hunt. And she gets so absorbed in reading the clues and everything that she actually gets locked into the mansion because everybody has left. And there's also a huge raging snowstorm outside. So she is locked in the mansion. She can't get out. And she is locked in there with one of the archivists of the museum who lost track of time and fell asleep at his desk. And so he's now in there with her. And so they're, they're likely going to start the scavenger hunt together. I say likely because there has hardly been any of the present timeline within this book. This is one of those books that has two timelines, but the timelines are very, very, very unbalanced. You are getting far more of the 1919 timeline than you are of the 1966 timeline. And that's actually a shame because I'm far more interested in the 1966 timeline than I am in the 1919 timeline. I'm about 50% of the way through this book and almost absolutely nothing has happened at all. Hardly anything. It's honestly rather boring. I find that I'm more interested and absorbed when it's the present timeline, but that's few and far between. And then when it is the present timeline, it's actually very short. So not only is the past timeline more frequent, but those chapters are far longer. So, so far it's okay. It's not grabbing my attention. I'm not really connected to the story in any way. It's not terrible, 
but it's just a little bit boring. I wish that there was more going on in the past timeline. I'm sure that we'll eventually get there, like as the story ramps up, but I just wish that we were not 50% in the way through with absolutely nothing happening. So as of right now, it's, it's probably sitting at a three star read. This last 50% would have to really, really ramp up and change my mind in order for me to change that rating. So it's okay, not great. That seems to be like my feeling of the month so far. Okay, not great, didn't love it, didn't hate it. I, I hope to have some winners coming up soon. I don't want this whole month to be a month of meh, but you know, sometimes those happen. Anyway, y'all, I have to head inside. Today is going to be a very, very busy day at work. I have a lot that I have to get done, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to update you any more today until after I'm done with work and maybe after I've read a little bit more of the Magnolia Palace. So let's get this week started, y'all. I'm sitting here working at my computer and this is what I'm dealing with. My, my shoulder cat, can you hear him purring? He loves being on my shoulder. He jumps up here any chance that he gets, which makes it very hard to get things done, as you can imagine, especially when he's super wiggly. Ow. <laughs> He'll drape himself over me like this and thrust his head into my hand, basically saying that he wants aggressive snugs is what he wants. So I'm going to go ahead and give him some scratches and then continue what I was doing. Hey y'all, it is now Wednesday afternoon. There haven't been any updates since Monday. Yesterday was probably one of the busiest work days I've had in a while. It was insane. We are definitely in our very busiest period here at my job. And so I barely was able to get up from my computer at all yesterday from like the moment I sat down at 7 a.m. to when I left at four. It was basically nonstop. So I was definitely exhausted. And I honestly didn't really have any updates for you at the time anyway, because I was in the middle of the Magnolia Palace and I didn't finish that until last night as I was cleaning up after dinner. So I did finish that and my thoughts about it didn't really change. It was an okay read. It was fine. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. There wasn't really anything inherently wrong with it. It didn't do anything egregious for me to dislike it. It was just a meh read. I didn't necessarily feel like a lot happened in either the past or the present timeline. I felt it was just kind of a slow moving story that didn't really keep or hold my attention. Didn't really connect with or care about any of the characters. So it was just all right, I didn't have an awful reading experience with it or anything like that, but I didn't have a phenomenal reading experience. Nothing memorable or mind-blowing. In fact, this was pretty forgettable. I will probably forget about it within the next few days. So it is what it is. I also kind of feel like the book wrapped up a little bit too neatly. It was one of those things where everything was just kind of tied up nicely in a bow, which I kind of feel was unrealistic considering the events of the story and the fact that the past timeline takes place almost 50 years before the present, but yet things that were unresolved in the past timeline get easily resolved in the present timeline. I didn't really, I didn't really just jive with it, y'all. So it was okay, but I don't feel the need to keep it on my shelves. I will probably be putting it up on Pango at some point because I'm never going to reread it or even think about it again, probably. Aside from that, I did start Love on the Brain this morning by Allie Hazelwood, so I'm not very far into it at all. I don't really have an opinion yet. I'm still trying to get into the swing of the story, just trying to connect with it and what's going on. I do really enjoy Allie Hazelwood's writing. I feel like she's very clever. She's got a great sense of humor. I'm looking forward to the banter that I'm sure is going to exist within this book. I have heard that it is almost like a carbon copy of the love hypothesis only with like a hate to love and I can already tell that it's going to be very very predictable. It seems like it might have almost like a you've got mail kind of trope which I do love. I love the you've got mail trope but it was almost instantly thrown at you in the very beginning of the story so you're able to instantly figure that out from the get-go. But like I said, I don't really have any thoughts or opinions on it because I haven't really gotten that far into it. But I just know that I loved the love hypothesis. I'm really hoping that I love love on the brain too. And I don't want this to be a month of mess. So far, we are over to y'all. You and the Magnolia Palace were not great. They were like only three stars for me. Definitely need to like pick up and get some better books going. I have high hopes for love on the brain. I have high hopes for beach read. Hopefully this month is going to pick up and redeem itself. I sure hope so. But that's really all that I have in terms of updates. It's just really been a crazy busy work week. I'm not sure how many more updates I'm going to have before the end of this vlog. Nothing really much is going on at this point. 
I picked like one of the busiest weeks of our year in order to start vlogging so I'm sorry about that guys but I do know that I enjoy watching reading vlogs and I enjoy consuming wrap-ups in vlog styles so this is for all of those people who like those vlog style wrap-ups rather than formal sit-down wrap-ups which will also happen on my channel um one just went up today actually so I will cater to both kinds so I hope that on these very mellow vlogs where nothing is happening you are still enjoying the reading content I mean that's what you're here for right anyway um I have about 45 minutes left of work and then I'm going to head to my CrossFit class, go home, cook dinner, clean up, the same old, same old routine of every single day. But if I have any further thoughts by the end of the day regarding love on the brain, I will definitely let you know. Hey y'all, it is Thursday morning and I wanted to come and give you an update because I am about 50% of the way through Love on the Brain. So this story is a woman in STEM novel and it follows Bee who is a neuroscientist. She works for the National Institute of Health and she is being sent to Houston, Texas for three weeks to collaborate with NASA on a project concerning helmets and astronauts and brain mapping and all of the stuff that is way over my head. But anyway, on the NASA side, the person lead, leading that side of the project is her arch nemesis from graduate school. So it is definitely meant to be like a hate love story. And it's very cute so far. It's got its own style of charm, but it's definitely not mind blowing in any capacity. I would say it's overly predictable. In fact, I would say almost everything about this story is entirely predictable. For example, I think I mentioned yesterday that there's like this kind of you've got male trope going on. And you obviously know, even though you haven't seen the other perspective, you obviously know that it's Levi on the other end of that keyboard. And I still yet haven't figured out why this trope is included because it's really not necessary. And I don't even think it adds anything to the story, but it's just another way that it is predictable. I definitely like Allie Hazelwood's writing. She is very clever, obviously. She herself is a woman in STEM, and so she uses that experience to put in her novels. And so I enjoy a lot of the things that she discusses. I will say that it seems in some places that this book is very heavy handed with regard to social commentary. And that's not necessarily why I'm here, why I'm reading the book. So sometimes that gets a little bit over the top for me. I did really enjoy the discussion that they had about standardized testing, but overall, I'm just not, I'm not here for the social commentary. I get that because it's a woman in STEM novel there has to be some remarks about how difficult it is for women in STEM and the sexism and misogyny that does exist in that field I totally and completely get it but sometimes it does just feel a little bit heavy-handed I will say that I do like the fact that our main character B is a vegan I too am a vegan and so it's kind of funny to hear about some of her experiences as a vegan because I too can relate to that so that's just like an interesting side note and also B is almost comically dense like she is convinced because of her experience with Levi in graduate school that they are like mortal enemies and that he obviously hates her and so she's misinterpreting absolutely everything about him and even when he outright says B I don't hate you she still ignores that and is completely convinced that he hates her and she will make note of it like oh it must be difficult for you to be working in this situation with me with because you hate me so much like things like that I'm like B even if it were true, why would you continue to bring attention to it? So sometimes that is also a little bit frustrating. So I find that I'm not necessarily connected with the characters. I'm not necessarily invested in the relationship. And also Allie Hazelwood is definitely using miscommunication in this story to suit her purposes. For example, Levi thinks that she is married to the boy she was engaged to back in graduate school, but her fiance actually cheated on her with her best friend and so they are not together but since she always wears her grandmother's wedding ring as like a memory she always has it on and so Levi is unaware that they broke up he sees the ring he thinks that she's married and there have been a couple of opportunities to clear this up but it just never happens and now they're in a situation where they are kind of on their own together and I think some of these things are going to be revealed I think that things are going to be escalating a little bit and I'm definitely here for it I want to see how the story progresses I want to see the relationship grow but I think that there's just a lot of tropes here that don't need to be included like the miscommunication like the you've got mail trope even though I absolutely love that trope it just seems purposeless in this story and the fact that it's overly predictable just to know right off the bat what's happening and kind of what the plays are I really hope that it ends up surprising me over this next 50 percent so far it's just fun and cute and I'm enjoying myself but it's not blowing me away like the love hypothesis did it's not to the level that I feel like the love hypothesis was yet so we'll see if the last 50 percent changes my mind about it at all so far it's probably sitting around like a 3.5 so it's definitely a step above the first two reads of the month but it's not blowing me away like I wanted it to so Anyway y'all, you know the drill. It's time for me to go in and bust out some work. It's a busy, busy time at work right now and I am tired and just 
plucking through. Just got to get through the next couple of weeks until it starts to slow down a teeny tiny bit. So I will update you as soon as I've finished. I could possibly finish it today. I'm not going to hurry to do it, but I will definitely finish it tomorrow prior to ending this vlog. So I will let you know my thoughts once I have finished the book. Hey y'all, it is Friday morning. I'm about to head into work to finish out this week, but as promised, I did finish Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. So I wanted to go ahead and come on here and share my final thoughts on the book. So this ended up being a really sweet read. I definitely enjoyed the last 50% of it a lot. I think I'm going to settle on a four star for the book. The overall plot of the book itself, I didn't feel was like anything super mind blowing or anything like that. Again, I felt like it was very predictable overall, but I still really enjoyed the story. I think what makes Allie Hazelwood unique is because of her experience in the sciences and how she's able to incorporate that into her book. And again, I feel like she's very smart, clever, witty, great banter. Her characters are super quirky, sometimes to the point of being non-relatable because of how quirky they are. But I definitely really enjoyed B and Levi. I enjoyed watching their dynamic and their relationship. I related to B as a character a lot because like, as I said, she's vegan. And also she was so funny because anytime she saw roadkill on the side of the road, she like started to genuinely cry. And I, I get that. I hate seeing dead animals on the side of the road. And so her passion for animals and her love of cats was just me. Like I felt in some ways that I was B just in her overwhelming love of, of animals and things like that. So overall, this was very cute, very sweet. There were some things that I definitely felt could have been left out. I didn't necessarily understand the little side plot that happened in here regarding B and a famous Twitter account that she runs. I didn't necessarily understand the point of it overall or what it was trying to accomplish and the you've got mail trope that I mentioned before like in her communications with Levi all stemmed around that Twitter account and I'm not entirely sure why that was included I again still don't really feel like it added too terribly much to the story or, or added necessarily any depth it did add some conflict but again that conflict was unnecessary so I feel like that could have been probably eliminated overall when I was looking on Goodreads in the comments about this book I did hear some people complain about like the action hero ending and I can kind of see that I felt like it was a little bit out of place for the overall tone and feel of the story I definitely felt like it could have been approached and done a little bit differently if you've read this book you probably know what I mean I don't really want to say anything to avoid spoilers but there was a brief part at the ending of this book that was very action hero like and very out of tune with the rest of the story so this book is not perfect it definitely has some flaws all of the ones that I mentioned in a previous clip the ones that I'm mentioning now so again I'm gonna stand by my assessment that this was not up there with the love hypothesis it was not top tier like that but it was still very much enjoyable and I probably will definitely be reading more of Allie Hazelwood's books especially more that she writes in this world the women in stem novel so overall I'm pretty happy with my experience and like I said I am giving it a four stars and I think that's it for this vlog y'all I've got to finish this clip so that I can actually get it edited and then the whole video uploaded so that it will be live tomorrow for you all. This vlog probably ended up being a little bit longer than I expected just because it is over a week. Like I started it on Thursday of last week rather than Saturday, which is when I hopefully plan to start vlogs in the future. So that's what I'm going to go do. There are also a couple of exciting releases today. The New York Comic Con Funko Pops are coming out today and I'm hoping to snag the two Harry Potter exclusive ones and then also my favorite reading planner is being released today. It won't actually ship until like December-ish, but I'm gonna try to snag one. It's the Always Fully Booked Planner by Little Inkling. So I'm gonna try to snag that. And then as soon as I do have that, like in December, I'll probably do another flip through. There is already one on my channel from the 2021 version, I believe. So I will go ahead and try to remember to link it up in the cards for you so that you can check it out, see if you might be interested. But like once they're gone, they're, they're pretty much gone because they are dated planners. So like by the end of the year, she does re-release them or anything so I definitely want to try to get my hands on one of them and use it because I just feel like it's it's such a great planner that is dedicated to readers and can definitely be used as a functional daily planner as well so I'm gonna go ahead and head into work now start my day get this clip edited and uploaded and all that good stuff and I will start a new vlog if not tonight tomorrow see you later guys